Hello, my friends. So I got a comment the other day asking if I could do a video on morality. And it's been a while since I've done a video just on abstract philosophy, so I figured I might as well. And the first thing that I want to say about morality as a whole is that I am not a universalist, but I am also not a moral relativist. And I know to a lot of people that might seem like I'm trying to uh, square a circle. So I'd like to explain myself and begin with why I'm not a universalist. Um, moral universalism almost always rests on two sort of uh, strains of thought, in my experience. It's either based on a theological argument that there's one God, one divine substance, and that we all share the same soul or spark of divinity that is given to us by the one God. And I disagree with that completely. So that argument goes right out the window. But the other uh, secular version of it, I think is best exemplified by someone like Stefan Molyneux. Uh, if you haven't seen it, look at Stefan Molyneux's Universally Preferable Behavior book, UPB where he calls it, quote, a rational proof of secular ethics. And these ethics are based on, like, the theological tradition that I just mentioned. And a lot of the assumptions that he makes are basically covert assumptions that correspond exactly with, like, a Judeo-Christian point of view... Uh, but they're just reformulated in secular terms. But the problem with these kinds of arguments, like Stefan's rational proof, is that Molyneux and most other objectivists and uh, moral universalists, they base their argument for their universal morals on logic. And the reason they do this is because they want to give it this appearance of universality. They want to equate logic with something like mathematics or um, science, and they want to bring you to their conclusions using some kind of logical syllogism. And give you the impression that, oh, it's just a logical argument, this is logically proven, and logic is like mathematics, it's universal, so therefore it applies to everyone. So that's the reason they use logic, but the problem with that is they are misapplying logic, and they're com it seems like they just either don't understand logic, or they're completely aware of the limitations of logic, and yet they just ignore that completely because it helps to support their argument, and they're just using it as any other piece of rhetoric, any other rhetorical device. Uh, and the, the problem with logic, I'll explain this, there's a great series of articles written by... Uh, a gentleman named Fat Fist Fatty. And he explains very clearly, and this is honestly something that if you've taken a Logic 101 course, you'll understand that logic is a system of derivational inference. And a logically valid syllogism or a logically valid conclusion is always, necessarily, 
a restatement of the premises. You will never find, in a logically valid conclusion, you will never find any new information that wasn't already contained and assumed within the premises. So the assumptions that you're making at the start within the premises or the axioms can only be reformulated within the conclusion. You're not going to learn anything new. You're not going to get any anything uh, proven or uh, some kind of universal truth from logic because a logical syllogism is just, as I've repeated now I think three times, a restatement of the premises. That is what makes a conclusion in logic valid, is if the conclusion was already assumed within the premises. So your logic doesn't prove anything. It's it's a rhetorical device if you're using it in the context of trying to prove your, your morals. Uh, logic is only useful in certain applications, and it's only useful really to, to keep information organized, to make sure that you're sticking to the premises that you began with. Uh, because, like I've said, the assumptions can only be restated, repackaged in the conclusions. There's never anything new. It's only a derivation. It's always derivation. So that's why uh, logic can't be used to prove something like morality. It's absurd. But, of course, they use it to give the appearance of universality. So if that's why I'm not a universalist, why am I not a moral relativist? Uh, that's also a relatively simple explanation. Morals cannot be merely a choice because morality, fundamentally, is a visceral, instinctive reaction. Just like beauty, just like uh, love. Beauty, I think, is the best example. You can't choose what you find beautiful. Beauty, what you find beautiful, is based on your instincts. And it's the same with morality. You cannot choose what to viscerally react to, to the point where you are willing to commit an act of violence to cause that action to cease, to end. Because I think that's exactly what morality is. Morality is... A moral law, essentially, is that which you are willing yourself to use force to prevent. Or that which you, on the other hand, if you're talking about like a virtue, which I think is related to morality, it's that which you're willing to praise, that which you find praiseworthy in those sorts of things cannot be determined merely by a choice. It is built on instinct. And instinct is not something that develops purely within the individual. Instincts are developed within, essentially within a species or a subspecies. And in sociological terms or anthropological terms, those are nations, ethnic groups, races. And that's another reason why race is so important, because you share a common set of instincts with people uh, whom you have a common national identity with, a national, literal, biological identity with, uh, or ethnic, or racial identity with. And because you share a set of instincts, those good instincts, those instincts which preserve uh, your life, further your development, increase your flourishing, increase your happiness, those are based on instincts that are shared by your tribe or your nation. And you can't just choose what instincts you have about that. Now, obviously there's an issue with people who have bad instincts, whose who have degenerated, whose instincts have decayed over time 
because of their environment and because of the influences upon them. But I think in our natural environment, and this is attested by writers like Tacitus, in our natural environment, when we're amongst our tribe, our nation, living the lives that we naturally ought to be living, then most people, 99.9% .9 of people, are good moral people. They share the same instincts of morality. And the people who are aberrations are quickly taken care of and thrown into a bog by the people who have good instincts. So that's a quick discussion on morality. Hope you enjoyed. Thank you for watching.